Well, Timothy, week one of the finals. I know you've got no interest because your mob's not playing, but it was a beauty Friday night's game against Hawthorne and Collingwood. It was an absolute perler. A bit of vintage knuckle. It was, wasn't it? It was a really, really good game, but uh, what I saw was Hawthorne are able to put the foot down when they want to. And when they accelerate, they accelerate away, and they, they just looked a far better side than Collingwood. And in 20 or 30 minute patches just dominated the game so I was fully impressed with them they continue to be flag favourite for me Can you write the pies off or not? No I reckon they're tough enough to fight back um, be a tough one against the West Coast because they were in a Ooh. pretty good nick but uh, yeah I think they'll, they'll fight back, don't worry about that Right, let's get to Saturday afternoon. Amy Stadium. I know you were fascinated by the result. I know you. I saw you there up on yeah. the fence, the early one in there. Um, what did you think? I didn't think it was that bad. The five AA commentary team said it was disastrous, almost to a man. Um, I thought they were a bit harsh. I thought the Crows were close and just needed to tweak it a little bit better. Got smashed at stoppage, and they haven't been smashed there all year. Yeah, and that's probably the worrying thing moving forward as, as we look at the, uh, the Freo game with big uh, Sandalands causing that issue. But I reckon that... Uh, to get as much of the balls they got, what's going on there? Turn that off. Sorry, gonna... <laughs> Cut that bit. <weekend. laughs> Sander. Sorry, <about> that. <laughs> yeah, I reckon to get as much of the ball as they did inside 50 sort of says, okay, well, there was an opportunity there to score more. The moments in front of goal were the, the low light of the afternoon. The thing I think they have to be careful of if they meet Sydney again, and the only place they'll meet them is in a grand final, is to make sure that they don't allow them to do what they just did. It seemed like they dictated terms, they said right we're going to clog this up, we're going to do this, we're going to go one on one and at times the boys just didn't know, their ball movement they'd been used to wasn't allowed. Yeah, I don't think they had a change up either. I mean, they just seemed to sit with it and hope it was going to turn. And I've heard Dean Bailey say that even at three quarter time, they thought they were still going to win the game. They were going to win this arm wrestle. And sooner or later, you had to break from it. And I don't think they broke from it. So I think not only will the, the playing staff learn a little bit, I think the coaching staff might learn a little bit as well. Had a bit of inexperience. Um, about the inexperience, I mean, you've played a couple of finals in your day. Don't tell me how many. Um, how much does that count? How much does that inexperience count? Because for nine of them, it was their first crack at it. Yeah, I think it counts for a lot. And look, having been a Port supporter, we... Where? Yeah, yeah. yeah. We mucked you up... never know. <laughs> we mucked up uh, two of those first finals, those qualifiers. One against Sydney and one against Collingwood, which really cost us in the draw. We ended up going the other side to Brisbane and Brisbane, and that's not a good side to be in. So uh, we understand that that inexperience can come out. What has to happen, which I think didn't quite happen for Port Adelaide back in those days, in 02 and 03, was that you didn't get your confidence straight back. You didn't say, hey, we've been good all year, let's not do that again. We didn't get the confidence back in finals until 2004. It took you know, a couple of years of those experiences. So all I'd say to Crows players and fans is that get your confidence straight back, get back on that horse as quick as possible. And I find it amazing that a conversation about the Crows can be two minutes on Port Adelaide. <laughs> <laughs> two minutes around, I've got Trying no to help here. idea. Geelong Fremantle Saturday night. No one picked it. Everybody thought walk in the park for Geelong. They were red hot going into finals. wasn't over by quarter time, but it almost was. Oh, gee. Was, um, the big stars stood up. Pavlich was outstanding. Oh. And uh, the thing is that Sandlands is such an issue. He's such an issue. He's been out for most of the year. He's so big. You know, it's impossible to get around him and he gets the first hand away. And they've got great midfielders and they've got midfielders that will get a lot of it and penetrate in. So, look, they were good. But, look, I'm still not a rat for Freo. I don't know what it is. Maybe you just don't like don't You like, don't like Ross Lyon. Come on, say like, it. I don't like Ross Lyon's style. He might be a terrific bloke, but I don't like his style of play. So that's the thing that worries me. I think it's one that Adelaide can win. You like John Worsfold's style and you like their style of play. They're the smoky for me. They've got so many serious weapons. If it's weather fine, track fast like it was yesterday, uh, near impossible to beat. Yeah, and it's, they got such a quick style. Oh. And they're big guys up for Darling was outstanding. I think he had four before half time. You know, they were really outstanding. And uh, it's going to be pretty tough to beat that combination. Cox and that, no, we keep doing what they do in the ruck. Prittis gets a million touches there. Yeah, they're going to be hard to play. Uh, yeah, Collingwood, a big, big challenge. Friday night this week, Crows free old Amy Stadium. A word for your Port Adelaide people before we go. Your best and fairest on Friday night. Kane Corns a surprise winner. Yeah, well, the, the voting system does 0 to 4. So everybody in their role gets to vote on. And look, he, every time he plays, he does his role. So if he's doing his role, he's going to score well in that system. So, But I, I must admit, I was surprised. I thought Brad Ebert would take it out. And, uh, and perhaps Broad being second. And they were runner-up. 
to Kane by two votes, I think, or something like that. So, look, in the end, he's won four BNFs now, so he walks away a happy man. I believe that Chad was there for the moment too, uh, which was a bit of a surprise. Uh, well played by the footy club, and great to have Chad back in the uh, the family. Do you need a hanky? Yeah, I do. I've got a cold. Mm. Tough enough, princess. Ha <laughs> ha!